Hey guys, how's it going? This is Bobby Cryptonite here and welcome to another CryptoChef video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a hero dish that is very easy, very cheap to make and delicious at the same time. It is of course the classic macaroni cheese. You shall require macaroni, cheese, two obvious ones, uh, salt and kettle full of lovely water. So without any further ado, I'm going to show you how to make mac and cheese. First things first, add the water to the pan. I've recently boiled it so it shouldn't take long to get it up to the boil. Um, just a good amount of water in there, sorry if I'm obscuring this with my arm, this is only my second cookery, well third technically, cookery video. Uh, I think that should be enough, I'll go and ask one of my parents if I'm doing it right. Uh, and for salt. Uh, Pasta water, in order for the pasta to taste nice and not bland, should be as salty as a human tear, so you should put a good amount of salt in there. And then stir it in and allow it to come up to the boil. Next thing we're going to focus on is the pasta. We're using a, five, a 500 gram pack and there's three of us. Uh, so should use 90 grams each, which should equate to, well, which does equate to, because I'm good at maths, not to brag, uh, 270 grams. So weigh out 90 grams per person, and once the water has come up to the boil, you should add it to the pan. Okay, now we're going to do the salty as a human tear test. Not that I make a regular thing of tasting human tears, uh, that's kind of sick, but need to... See? Needs more salt. Needs more salt. Okay, the noise you can hear is the kettle. Uh, we decided that we needed more water. What I'd put in was fine for about one or two people, but seeing as there's three of us, we needed more water than that. Uh, so the kettle's on to boil more water. Uh, I've got my scales here, I just switch them on and put my 2006 World Cup football bowl on there in which to weigh out my pasta. Press the on button again to zero it and now I'm going to weigh out 270 grams of your finest macaroni. That's 106, oh, 136. 108. 262, 268, 270 exactly. What did I tell you about me being a professional? Oh yes, I have a one standard rate home ec. Wow, I sound so ghostly there. Oh well. I'm actually quite a nice guy when you meet me. Okay guys, we've sorted out the water. First I added too much, then I added too little. No, first I added too little, then it was too much and we've got it right now, right saltiness, the water is all fine, it's in the pan boiling as you can probably hear. Now I'm going to talk to you about cheese sauces. There are two ways that you can make macaroni cheese. One of them involves milk and corn flour and melted grated cheese and that makes a stodgy sauce that goes lumpy if you leave it alone for more than a nanosecond. So the best way to make macaroni cheese is to just wait until the pasta has is ready, then you drain it and you put the drained pasta back into the pan with some butter and you stir in some grated cheese and the grated cheese just melts in and that's your cheese sauce. It's easier, it's not quite so stodgy and it tastes nicer as well so that's the way we're going to do it. Maybe one day I'll make another macaroni and cheese video with the other type of sauce once I've kind of got the bravery to do it. I've done it on a few occasions but recently I've had a bit of bad experience with making macaroni and cheese that way. Uh, so without any further ado, let's get grating some cheese. Okay guys, now it's time for cheese. This is a 400 gram block and I've been advised that for three people I should use a quarter of it, so there's half, there's a quarter. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, something terrible has happened. We do not, as it transpires, have a grater on the premises. Uh, I don't know how it's happened. Uh, I apologise for this technical difficulty, but we are going to improvise because that's what my show is all about. 
we play things by ear, that we, we overcome the challenges that we are presented with. So we're just going to very finely cut this cheese, just kind of shave it. Okay, that wasn't fine at all. That wasn't fine at all. Just taking millimetres off at a time and it'll give you the desired effect. Okay, ignore that. Millimetres off at a time. Shaving the cheese. Shaving the cheese, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Now the battery is dying on this camera, so I may have to run and switch cameras. Uh, the next few clips may not be as good quality because they're not being filmed on my big Canon. Uh, but once again, that's what this show is all about. We are presented with challenges halfway through the making of the video, and we rise and accept the challenge. And that's my friends, that's how you shave cheese. Uh, and then just to make sure you get it right, you should probably just chop it up even more and try and not get it to stick together. And that should all melt in very nicely when the pasta is at that stage. Okay guys, our water is now boiling, so I'm now going to add the pasta to the pan. And you should just let it do away, maybe occasionally stir it, just to make sure it stays not so it doesn't stick to itself or the bottom of the pan and that should be you. Okay guys, taste tests have confirmed that the pasta is now ready to drain so just put your colander in the sink, make sure it's stable and don't go in too quickly, just uh, pour it in like that and with a few exceptions all the pasta should go in there and then just shake it all about and don't lose any. I haven't lost any there, just those two bits, but I didn't lose them with my awesome shaking. Uh, and then just tip it back into the pan, stick a good big bit of butter in there and stir it all about, then add your shaved cheese. Okay, there we have it. We have our pasta drained and with butter, and now it's time to add the chopped up cheese shavings. Now, I'm not quite sure how this is all going to work out. Uh, could be a disaster, but uh, let's hope that fortune smiles upon me and uh, stir it all up. I hope this is still warm enough to melt the cheese. Uh, if not, I shall be very angry and those who eat this will also be very angry because I'll have made them a crappy mac and cheese. My viewers won't like me because I'll have misguided them and shown them how to make something that's just plain nasty. There's a lot at stake here, so... Uh, let's all send up a quick prayer that this works. And it's actually working. The cheese appears to be melting in there. There's a lovely squishy sound as you stir it about. And it's beginning to look like the real deal. Uh, oh, well that's not. That really isn't. But uh, let, let's cover that up. Let's edit that out. Uh, be a bit Soviet about it, uh, covering up the, the bad things and saying, yay, look at us, we're cool. And there we go. Voila, how to make mac and cheese. Now let's get it plated up. So there we have it. Three lovely plates of macaroni cheese. Taste tests have confirmed that it isn't half bad. And a few bits of information I should have said earlier. Uh, the hob that I had the pan on with the pasta I think we had it about three or four and it's really just until the pasta is nice and soft but not soggy and horrible and remember the level of saltiness so we've overcome problems i.e. not having a grater we've managed to get that all right and it's all melted into the pasta nicely so we've got god to thank for that one and now if you wish to be all european uh, you can grate nutmeg onto it al italiano uh, like the italians do just Gently give it a good sprinkling. This is my plate, so more for me because I'm a hungry person because I'm the chef. So that's how it's done. This is Bobby Cripp tonight. This is a cheap dish you can. Well, I'm not a cheap dish. This is a, this macaroni and cheese is a cheap dish that you can make for yourself and your friends and enjoy. This is Bobby Cripp tonight. I hope you've enjoyed this. I know I have. Shall see you in the next video. Tatty bye.